What's going on guys? I'm back with another reaction video. And it's about uh, this guy. I came across his YouTube. I have not watched the video yet. His name is... I don't want to butcher it. Let me look real quick. His name is Damien Moreau. I think Mora. I don't know. He's going to probably pronounce it in the video. But this particular video intrigued me because he passed A+, plus, Net+, plus, and Sec+, plus in 30 days. And you know me, I'm a, a proponent of really not getting a lot of certs, especially like super fast, because the objective that I always tell people is like, you want to kind of learn things when you're getting a cert and not just, you know, learning to pass. So I mean, studying to pass, a study to learn. So kind of interested in, uh, in this. So we're going to check out uh, what he did. Hey, I'm the Mirage. I'm 34 years old and I'm just now getting into the IT field. 30 days ago from the recording of this video, 30 days prior to the moment that I'm recording right now, I was just a guy that was interested in the IT field. I was studying for my A plus certification. I had no certifications yet. At that time, 30 days ago, I had no certifications. I had no experience in the field. I've never had a job here and I have no type of anything with it. But 30 days later, as of the recording of this video, not only have I achieved my A plus certification, I've also achieved my network plus and my security plus certification. And in this video, I want to tell you exactly how I did that, the resources that I use, and then also I want to tell you the study method that I followed in order to do this. So let's get into that and let's talk a little bit about it. As I said, I have no background in IT whatsoever. I was born in the 80s and then throughout the 90s is when I grew up and went to school. And during that time, we didn't really have computers on the desks or it wasn't really anything that was anything special. Throughout my entire elementary school life, I also did not have a computer in the home that came around the time when I was in eighth grade and I was about to go into high school. All right. This is a lot to unpack here. I'm curious to see what his actual background is because, see, a lot of people feel that they have to rush out to go get these certs to jump into IT. But a lot of people have transferable skills that they've been doing in their career for years and don't necessarily have to go this route. So I'm curious to see what his experience is, but also. And he's a black person. I'm black. Now, we do know I, I was born in 1992, so I'm 30. Everybody didn't grow up with a computer. I looked up and got our first computer in the house, I think, seventh grade, maybe. So a little bit kind of like uh, like around the time he said. And it's not like, you know, I mean, I learned how to use it, but it's not other things that you know about it. And a lot of black kids never had a computer, so they always went to the school library or the public library which is one of the reasons why you don't see a lot of us in tech. So I actually forgot about, you know, what the privilege is of actually even owning, you know, having a computer. Like now kids have iPads and cell phones. So it's a little bit different, but still not the same as actually having like an actual computer laptop at your house. So I'm going to get back into his video really quick. But no, I didn't have it. I didn't have computers like that. I wasn't one of those kids that was fascinated by it to the point that I would take it apart and put it together. I'm not saying that I probably wouldn't have been that kid that did that, but it just weren't around in my house. I, I wasn't around it. This is something that I literally have no background in. So what about a formal education? Did I go through that for formal education? I have to say, no, I did not. As a matter of fact, when I graduated from college, well, from high school, when I graduated from high school and I went into college, this is around the year 2004, my original major was theology. And theology has nothing to do with tech. As a matter of fact, we studied pretty much what was happening within the Middle East from the year probably 4000 BC to the year about 100 AD. And that's pretty much the study of theology. There is nothing technical about it. It requires no type of tech skills. And that's where I found myself. I was a theology major when I was in college. It's not like I have a background in tech or that I studied this in college and then I was able to take these exams. I don't have a formal education in this. I went to college. Did I go into a little bit of a tech field? Did I have a work help desk? Did it, was this my job? No. All the jobs that I had, first of all, they were in human services, like trying to be a person that helps other people. Now it's very low tech and very high people centered. After that, around the year 2012, I joined the United States Army. But even in then, my job wasn't in tech. I was a paralegal specialist. After that, after the Army was done, I worked at a college and there was a little bit of tech given. There was a little bit of tech there. Anyway, so here I was in the school and there, I didn't do anything with tech. I was a chaplain and also the athletic director. By the way, speaking of having nothing to do with tech, which is considered brainy, I'm also a competitive bodybuilder and a personal trainer. Also far, far from the tech field. 
Okay, man. So he, his uh, experience is all over the place. And uh, I'm not getting at you. Matter of fact, man, um, I'm going to try to reach out to you. So by the time you see this video, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, since you were in the military, you have a lot of resources at your disposal that you could use uh, that could benefit you with a lot of connections. Companies love to hire you all. Um, but yeah, so that's a lot. So since he jumped around so much without actually looking at his resume, looking at exactly what he did, it's hard to tell what his transferable skills are. But I can already tell, like, if he's a trainer, chaplain, some of the other things, he has good people skills, uh, which are underrated soft skills that you need in tech, IT, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to try to fast forward now to kind of where he's talking about some other stuff, because this is a long video. I don't, I'm not going to react to the whole thing. I come to the year 2022. I'm a full-time dad, and I would say, you know, what's something I can do that's remote? What can I do that I'm actually going to enjoy? What's something that I'm going to be good at? And I said, so yeah, I decided 2022, this is going to be the year. I'm going to be able to do this. I'm going to be able to have some remote work. I'm still going to be this whole full-time dad, be there for my family, but I'm going to be able to do this work, especially, especially since the other type of work isn't really where I see myself right now. So yeah, I decided to do IT work and this started about six weeks ago. Took me six whole weeks of studying to be able to achieve my A plus, network plus, and my security plus examinations. And this is with absolutely no experience, no background, no job, nothing. Never took a class on it. But I'm gonna tell you how I did it and why I believe that this is something that can be replicated by other people. I'm not at the speed because it did take a lot, but it's something that definitely can be done. And then I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do from here. All right. So Here's the thing, and I don't, I don't recall him in this video ever saying he asked some people or looked out, asked what to do, because seasoned professionals would have told him, hey, don't do this, because it doesn't mean anything, because you can get all three of these certs that fast and just have them be sitting on them, because what real world skills do you have? If you apply to a job, and, you know, you say, how these certs, why do they care? They more so care about, can you do the job that, you know, you're applying to? And that's the big thing. I have many people that have the SIG Plus and they want to be a SOC analyst. And then we talk and I give them questions that they can't answer because they got the cert, but it doesn't show them how to do certain things at the job. Totally normal. They're supposed to just be back foundational. So I didn't hear him say that, but 30 days is a lot. I'm going to try to skip around to uh, where he said what he plans to do because uh, I checked out like two of his videos other before. I didn't watch them. Like I scammed him to see if he actually like said he landed a job or not yet. Um, so yeah, so maybe also he could see this and also be like a little bit of like advice for him. With the Network Plus exam, I made it through the course. I made it through the book. I never made it to questions. For the Security Plus one, I made it even further because... There were some hiccups, and I'll talk about that later on, how the hiccups actually helped me out. In the meantime, yes, I am going to get a job, but in the meantime, I'm going to get that makes this look lightweight. I will be doing the Google Coursera, the, their IT support certificate. Okay, do not, hey man, don't do that cert. It's useless. That's not, Google doesn't have any claims to that cert at all on their website. It's a waste of time. You do not need it. I have not found a job yet that says, Looking for the Google IT support professional certificate from uh, Coursera. A better option would be to uh, check out my guy Kev Tech. He has an actual help desk freaking course he's put on Udemy. And if anybody knows Kev Tech support, he's dope. It's way better than what the crap they're going to teach you on there. So please don't uh, get that, man. Um, um, yeah, so that's just it. I had to pause it right there. Let's go. Certificate course. And the reason why? I do not have experience. I don't have the formal education. And this is like a nice little hybrid ground, definitely made for beginners like myself. Yes, I'm certified in these things, but it's time for me to get something formalized as well. Also, in the meantime, yes, I am gonna get a job, but in the meantime, I'm gonna get really good at doing this job. I might not have had the experience, but I have a few things that I wanna to do to get good at this job. First of all, I'm gonna go back on LinkedIn Learning and I'm gonna look at all the different things that they might have for IT stuff to make sure that I'm, I know the field that I'm getting into. 
And then I'm also going to watch some of the, sh the videos on YouTube from this channel called Job Skillshare. They seem to do a pretty good job in explaining how the field works and what goes into IT. So yeah, I'm going to do that too. And also, I found a few books on Amazon about IT labs. I'm going to make sure that I go through those books as well. I want to make sure that I become good at my job. And one reason why I want to be good is because I know that I'm not, I'm not going to be working alone. I'm probably going to be working with some of you guys that are watching this video. And I want to make sure that I'm a contributing member of the team. I, I guess I might not have all the years of experience, but I want to make sure that when I hit the ground and I hit the ground running, I'm not like a impediment to anybody else that really knows his job and really knows what they're doing. Might have a better background, might have a formal education. Have been, have They've been at this for more than six weeks. So yeah, I just want to make sure that I bring myself up to speed as quick as I can. And I, I'm pretty confident in my ability to be able to, to, to learn quickly. So I actually like what you said. Uh, he pretty much was talking about what he wants to go back and do and watch all this stuff and lab. Um, I honestly, for help this, I would just, like I said, I was uh, really advise you to do the Kev Tech course just because I'm being biased, but like I said, go to his channel. I'm going to link it in the description. I think his stuff will be better. I don't think you need all of that to do help desk. Help desk is uh, one of those jobs where, I mean, you got to have very good people skills. But if you are able to learn, which you show you're capable because you passed all three of those certs, they'll be able to train you no problem. And within three, six months, you, you'll be a pro at your job. So I'll say do not go on overkill for that. And now the thing for you to figure out is like, what route do you want to go? You want networking, you want to go security, cloud, you want network security, you know, you name it. That's what you uh, really should have figured out before you ever got a certification. Kind of like figure out what you want to do first and then figure out what those jobs desire. And that you kind of reverse engineer your path to get where you want to go. That's how I teach my clients is like, let's start at the end and work our way back to the beginning. So we are intentional and we don't waste time getting things we don't need. I'm gonna let a little bit more of this video play and um, then it's gonna wrap it up. The next thing that I'm gonna do in addition to getting good at my job and also getting some type of formal education going is that I'm gonna learn Python. When I was going through the resources, I noticed that this was mentioned a, a couple of times, especially by a certain Mike's course. And it was also in the book, especially the secure coding section. I was reading that stuff. I'm like, man, I don't know a thing about code. So what am I supposed to do? And I just know that when I get into the field, I do want to make sure that I'm at least aware of this. It seems to be expected. In addition to that, I will be doing other certifications. Now I know that a lot of people would say, just skip the certifications, just get the experience. But I also want to catch up. And then when you don't have experience, the certifications mean a lot more. You see, here's what happens when you have experience. Not true. When you don't have experience, the certifications do not mean a lot more. They don't mean anything, but they really, I mean, they both experience Trump certifications all the time. You'll still be better off getting more experience and having a thousand certifications always. Um, and it's just time consuming. It's money you got to spend. It's so much stuff you're learning that it's not sticking because you're not doing this stuff every day. And that's why I'm an advocate of not getting all these certifications. It's kind of like school. You have to do all these different classes and different semesters. It doesn't stick because it's not practical. You're not doing the stuff every day. Like you said earlier about the labbing, focus on labbing. Don't focus on getting those certs. Lab projects, meaningful projects you put on your resume. That's going to get your start. That's going to help you out. And always, and you didn't really mention this, network, man. Network. You seem to be a good talker, good mouthpiece, uh, nice looking man. Use that to your ability. I see you on LinkedIn. I'm trying to connect with you. I want you to network, man. That's going to really help you out when it comes to getting into the IT field. I'm going to let it play a little bit more and I'm see what you guys say and then it's going to be wrapping it up. Experience. When you have experience, you do the job, you know you did the job, it went well, you know you have the skill, you can communicate that. But when you're self-studying with like like me, I sat down right here in this very seat to be able to prepare myself for all these exams. You don't really know what you know until someone tells you that you know it. Because I'm not communicating with other people. I'm not seeing what else is out there. And if I am seeing what else is out there, there are people that are so far ahead of me, like Network Chuck and you know David Bumbal and all these other people that are on YouTube and, and, and Josh that I can't pronounce his last name, but I gave him a link. All these other people that know so much more than me, that makes me feel like, hmm. Do I really even know this stuff? Now what the certification does 
is that it actually tells me that, yeah, you actually do have at least the minimal required knowledge and you can comfortably say that you have that minimal required knowledge instead of just being here like, well, you know, I, I've read about 10 books on this subject. That I, I think I know what I mean. I know the books, but I don't know if I know the field because how am I supposed to know if I know the field? So that's what certifications do for people that are beginners. For people that are not beginners, of course, they might be able to skip the certification and be confident because they actually did the job. So we're going to do some certifications moving forward. Well, first of all, I'm going to do the Python Institute, the, the certificate. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to link his video on in. Uh, I, I, he's going to do great. I think he will. I mean, he has the zeal. Now he just got to challenge and make sure he's doing it the right way. Um, yeah, I mean, the search will kind of give you some assurance, but just keep working hard, research, network. Now, I think you'll I think you'll be all right, man. I really do. I'm a subscribe, so I make sure I'm tuned in to a lot of your, the rest of your content, man. But uh, what do you guys think about this video? How do you feel about getting a lot of certifications? Do you feel like it will trump experience? Do you think it will help out, equalize it? Um, you guys let me know in the comments. And as always, like I say, let's stay.